Hello, Aquarius. My name is Missy, and I'm here to do the Bullshit and the Blessings for the first half of September. What we are going to do is get some general energies from these two decks. We will look at the details with this deck here. We will do a quick pick a card to look at the romantic energies with this deck here before we move on to the charm. So just go ahead and, and stick around. You'll, you'll see what I mean as we get going. I'm going to go ahead and uh, give my disclaimer while I'm shuffling. So these readings are meant to be timeless and general in nature. If the details fit for your situation, the reading is meant for you. But if they do not, please do not try to force it as that would do more harm than good and is definitely not my intention. I am not a doctor, lawyer, or accountant. So if you need uh, advice in any of those areas, please consult a professional. And please do not do something simply because I suggest it in one of these videos. You are an adult who has responsibility for your own life. Please use that responsibility to your advantage. Okay, so let me give it one more shuffle, and then we'll go ahead and get right into the reading. Uh, we have the song, uh, hold on, Staying Alive, uh, DJ Khalid. Well, that's quite a few, but it's four of them, but I think we're going to take it anyway just feels like we need it. We've got potions and spells, a pinch of this, a dash of that. Be sure you're sure before you call. It's the number 28, which breaks down to a 10. So that's like the wheel of fortune energy coming through right there. So that's basically saying, be careful what you wish for. You just might get it, right? Um, it's also kind of magician energy as well. Uh, because it is, it's not just a 10, it's also a 1. And uh, with the potions and spells, it's basically saying um, whatever you ask for, you'll get, I think. Sometimes I hate saying that because, you know, like people, are, they, they might think, oh, well, so-and-so said it's in this reading, whatever I ask for, I'm going to get. But you know, that's why I do my disclaimer at the beginning, because it is a general reading. <laughs> like, hello. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Interesting music. Uh, Sorry, I'm stumbling over my words. The music suddenly stopped. And then, just as I open it, now we've got Dream In, and it's 1234 exactly. You see that? Um, Dream In by Blondie. So what I was just saying, you know, uh, be careful what you wish for. You just might get it. Oh, that's the one right there. Oh, this one too. Hold on. That one. Now we've got the Ten of Pentacles on the bottom of the deck. Abundance. It says, it is happiness to wonder. It is happiness to dream. So funny that the word dream keeps coming through. But again, you know, I'm just here doing my job. You can't make this shit up. All right. So we've got the spider. We have greet the darkness. Uh-oh, what's happening? Intuition in the underworld. All right, hold up. Hold up. Got to get more space going. So somebody's feeling some kind of way. It's not all that. And then look, you've got the queen of, hold on. So it's basically the Queen of Swords with the King of Pentacles. Um, all right. So because we have two people that came out um, with, with our tarot cards here, this is telling me this is like a situation. It's a relationship, basically. It's a situation between, between two people, possibly an air sign and a earth sign. Um, the Queen of Swords... 
you know, it could be, well, we, this is an air sign reading. This is Aquarius reading. I almost forgot where I was for a second. Um, but, uh, the, the queen of swords or the queen of quills, um, Like, I always see it as Libra energy. Um, but uh, it could definitely be Aquarius energy. And then the King of Pentacles is typically Taurus energy. So there could be a relationship here um, with those two signs, but it doesn't have to be. It could be Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, or uh, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. And if it's not those signs, again, I, that's one of the reasons that I, you almost never hear me really saying signs unless it's a major arcana. Um, and that's because, um, you know, we all have all 12 signs of the zodiac in our personality. So even if I say someone who has earth in their chart, everybody has earth in their chart. You just, you just may not use it as much if you've got your planets placed in other signs, right? Or if your angles or, or the, whatever, if your, um, your ascendant, your midheaven, and any of those things are in other signs, you're not going to use that earth energy, but that doesn't mean it's not in your chart. Uh, we have the song, How Do You Want It, Tupac. So again, these can just be people who carry specific personality traits. So what are those personality traits? One person can be sharp-tongued. They could be the kind of person that's a little bit blunt, straightforward. They say exactly what they're thinking. They're very honest. And they also say the hard stuff, like, you know, the stuff that nobody else wants to say. But they do it because they know it, not because they're trying to be mean. Like, that would be the this card in the reverse, right? Um, they do it because they know that it needs to be said in order to bring about a, some sort of solution or healing or whatever, right? So that's the energy of the Queen of Swords. The King of, of Pentacles is someone who's very abundant. Abundant. This is typically someone who's going to have a lot of money, um, probably own a business. Um, if they don't have a lot of money or own a business, they're just very smart with money. Like they own their own house. They probably have their own car. They probably have a good job. They probably have a savings account or something like that, right? Like money, they're going to be abundant in some way or very secure. Um, and it can also be like secure in their own, in their own body in their own space and who they are um, if they're not financially secure it just means they have a lot of like they're very grounded in their personality very secure in who they are so again take that however it resonates for your situation but what's going on here right um it's saying it's it, especially because of these two cards that whatever you want to happen in this relationship you just have to say something. You have to speak up. You have to be vocal. But you but you have to be very, like, all of these cards here are saying you better do some serious shadow work before you do that. Because whatever it is that you say, um, especially, okay, like, especially if, and, and if you're saying, if whatever you're saying, you're saying to this person here who tends to be very blunt and straightforward and honest anyway, they're going to take you for, for your word. They're, they're going to, they're going to think, why is that not, um, focusing? They're going to, they're going to take everything that you say seriously, right? Um, they're going to count on it. Um, so you've got to take that seriously as well. All right, so let's get some more details to see what what kind of relationship this is, if we can, or what's going on in this relationship that's making you feel as if you have to say something, or like, what's going on? <laughs> Oh, I just realized the name of this song <laughs> and what we were talking about. How do you want it? Potions and spells. Be careful what you ask for. You just might get it. Okay. Seriously, I love when that kind of stuff happens. Like, I don't have any control over Pandora. I just put it on shuffle. Oh. 
just hold up. I feel like it goes like this, though. Okay. And hold up. We need to add another one here. So now we've got the hanged man, which totally makes sense. Again, because you need to put yourself on pause purposely to go into shadow work. You, you know, I feel like I, interesting, I feel like you're avoiding the shadow work, purposely avoiding it. I don't know, whatever. And the reason that I say that is because it came out four cards here and then this one here. But with this one, I felt like I wanted to lecture you. And I don't like lecturing people. Look at now you've got the sun underneath that. That's what's going to, and then the hierophant, which is going to bring, which is like, um, so the Hierophant is like, especially if this is a marriage or a partnership, that's what the Hierophant card is about. So the sun, the, the sun brings joy back to the partnership and it's because of the shadow work basically. But let's, um, okay, we've got the two of wands, the nine of swords, the moon, and the Ten of Swords, somebody feels betrayed. So with the Two of Wands, this is supposed to be support. This is supposed to be a partnership, but as you can see, she's talking to a skull. So one person left the partnership, died, something happened, somebody was betrayed. So there's sadness, depression. All, all three of these cards all basically say the same thing. These two cards are um, like the moon is the higher octave of the nine of swords. So the moon is literally like the nine of swords on steroids. So whatever happened where this was supposed to be some sort of partnership, whether that's a marriage or not, because remember, we're still in the general portion of the reading. This was supposed to be a partnership, but something happened and what it, some, it ended right. There was a death because now one person is talking to a ghost or a skull and there's sadness here, which, you know, that's what's right now. But if you don't do the shadow work, I feel like what it's saying is if you don't do the shadow work, you're going to end up taking what you feel right now and it's going to end up on steroids in the immediate future, which is the moon. And it's based on this right here, feeling betrayed and being stuck in your head and your emotions. So again, that doesn't have to be um, romance, but we're going to, we're going to look at the romance energies right here. So if you were watching that part and you were like, yep, that's me and my husband or whatever, um, you're going to want to choose group one, group two, or group three. And, uh, we're going to get a special message for your situation. It can be either a continuation of this message here, or it can be, you know, something else that you need to hear. But obviously the, you know, we already have the advice here as well. You already know exactly what you need. Well, not exactly what you need to do. You know, you already know what you need to do to figure out what you need to do. And I think you've been avoiding it is what this is saying. We have the song, Love Songs, The Dream. And we're going to use this one only because I feel like it's somebody flipping somebody else off. So take that however it resonates. <laughs> we'll go ahead and do it like this. One, two, and three. <laughs> I don't know why. It just feels like someone flipping someone off. <laughs> oh, my God. I crack myself up sometimes. <laughs> It's like they're seriously, like they're trying to do the flip off where you get the full finger in there. <laughs> it's as loud as can be. Like, that's how it looks to me. I'm sorry I'm laughing. It's just, you know, I have to, like, especially, I don't know if you're, if, if you're watching and you're one of the people that used to watch me on Facebook, like when I would do the crystal readings. 
I always have to go with whatever it is that they're showing me, right? Because that's one of the things that I do. I read crystals, and typically that's like a, a clairvoyant thing. I see images when I when I read the crystals, and so. I don't know how many times I've been reading a crystal and some crazy something comes through and I just have to go with it. And this is one of those, I'm not reading a crystal right now, but that's coming through as somebody, like they want to shove the, the bird into somebody else's face. That's all I have to say. Like, oh, okay. Look, we got the Eight of Cups, see? And look at the Eight of Cups is like, uh, they want to shove the bird in someone's face as they walk away. I w I'm so tempted to look at it right now just to see what it is, but I'm going to make myself wait. Oh, my God. Yeah. I totally just gave it away for group one, too, but I don't care. It's, like, too obvious. No, there we go. That's group two. And there we go, group three. We have the song, Savior, Rise Against. So let's see, the Six of Swords. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. Somebody wants to flip you off as they are leaving out the door. Bye, bitch, I'm gone. I'm so gone. See ya. <laughs> like that's how it feels. Don't like I I'm 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 so gone. It's I'm never gonna look back. Like oh my god. But they but the thing is they are looking back. Let's be honest because they're giving you the finger as they go. They really want you to feel it when they leave. Let's, that's just how the energy is coming through. Okay, so group two. We have like the King of Cups or the Roy de Cup and the King of Wands. So this is like. This is energy of somebody who is kind of passionate, I think. I don't know about, like, a long-term relationship, but I feel like somebody definitely has some attraction here, possibly. Well, we've got water and fire coming through, but I think it's the, a fire sign or somebody who has fire strong in their chart, even though I was just talking about how we have all 12 signs in our chart. When I say fire strong, that typically means they're going to have it strongly placed, meaning a sun, moon, or rising placement, or it's going to be one of the inner planets, or there's going to be a lot of aspects that are in fire or something where fire is a main part of their energy. Um, but I think whoever this, the, the, this fire energy is, they, they are passionate and have some attraction um, towards the other person, towards you, I think. Because uh, you know whether or not you're the fiery energy, right? Like if you're the fiery energy, you have a lot of passion for someone, you probably should say something with this particular card, like speak up. Um, but if it's the other way around and you're asking d how does someone feel, they have passion for you, they are attracted to you. I don't know if they'll speak up or not, um, just because I don't you know, like that does just because this is the night, it, even though the night does offer his cup, that's not a guarantee that he will. Um, and the way that I'm reading it, it, it's more like feelings. So if you are the one who has those feelings, offer your cup. But if you're asking about someone else's feelings, they do have them. I just don't know if they're going to say anything. All right, group three. So we have the Eight of Pentacles and the Wild Hunt. So like this is energy of someone I think who's like kind of looking. I think you're probably single and probably still looking, maybe dating. Maybe you're feeling like dating is a lot of work. Um, you're like, oh my God, what are you talking about? Single, single life. Why? <laughs> Why do I want to be in the single life? But like, um, I have to be honest. Like, you wouldn't be asking about it if you weren't interested, right? And even if it is a lot of work and it is the wild hunt, like, it is worth it. But it does feel kind of, like, as I'm looking at this, it, it feels like maybe it's not so much fun. Um, like, like, you're just going through the motions, if that makes sense. Like, you're sort of bored with it because um, it is a lot of work. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the charms.
Oh, good. They spread out. The last few ones that I did, I couldn't get them to spread or whatever. All right. So, um, God, I want to actually start a couple of places. I think I'm going to start here. Uh, actually, hold on. We have the song Ready for Love, Bad Company. Okay, so here in the center, we have over, you know, sitting over the moon and divine feminine energy. I feel like there's some sort of surprise coming in, possibly a surprise either from your child or a grandchild if you have them. And this is going to be um, someone, someone's small, someone's child, right? Uh, possibly even a gift. I think it's going to be like some sort of small heartfelt gift or a little surprise, um, something, something that's a surprise that makes you feel, feel very happy uh, is going to happen within this first half of September. So, so between the 1st and the 15th. Could be attached to a child or about a child or something. Okay. Um, now I want to come over here to Saturn over the solar plexus chakra. So especially with this letter T here, what that's telling me is that um, there is probably a lot of hard work attached to this person, place, or thing with the initial T. You probably already intuitively know that. Um, but it's also karmic, like it's, it's long-term hard work that you already are intuitively aware of that's attached to this letter T. You're probably passionate about it. Um, Saturn isn't always an easy energy though, I gotta be honest, I'm trying to make this like you know, positive, just because it is right next to the sacral chakra. So there's like a lot of passion. It's like a lot of passionate hard work. But there's, it's still hard work. Like it's still work, you know, it's still restrictive. It's still heavy. Um, so I have to read it that way. Um, and I got to be honest too, this song, Ready for Love, in the background, every time I say something about work, I hear ready for love. So it could be attached to love, but take it however it resonates for you. Uh, coming over here to the letter I, which is on top of the charm that says, be kind, be brave, be strong, be happy, be thankful, be true, be free, be at peace, be uh, compassionate. Um, this is saying you, like I will, like I will be, right? Like you're saying this to yourself, I will be all of these things when I speak or when I communicate, um, because this is coming out over the throat chakra. Um, but also it could be attached to a person, place, or thing with the initial I. Uh, with this you versus you, and then the, the lion coming out over this heart chakra, and then this uh, clouds over here, it's an issue of pride. There's, there's an issue of pride that's causing you a problem here. Um, and I almost want to say an issue of narcissism, but I don't want to go completely that far. I, I, the way that it feels in my belly that when I'm looking at this, it feels like it's right on the cusp. Like this pride issue is right on the cusp of being selfish and narcissistic. And that's why there's confusion. Uh, also you kind of intuitively know exactly what you need to say in order to build a bridge with this bridge over, over the crown chakra. You already know what it takes to build this bridge and it, it is words. It is some word that it takes. Also with the monkey and the circus coming out with the root chakra. Oh, and then we have the, the, uh, rune of movement, um, I feel like, and plus the circus is upside down, meaning you're leaving, you're getting ready to exit those curtains. If it was this way, you would be entering the circus. So because of all this energy here, the monkeys jump and swing from place to place. So it's chaotic. There's movement attached. Like I feel like you're moving away from chaos energy, moving away from confusion with this cloud here. Um, 
but it has to do with all of this hard work, overcoming the pride and ego, saying whatever you needs to be said that you intuitively know needs to be said to build this bridge and taking the action that you know needs to be taken. Being kind, courteous, compassionate, all of those things. Okay, and then there's a surprise coming in for you as well. Okay, so I hope that resonates. If it does not, please stick around. There may be another reading for you here on the channel that does. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, hit the notification bell, anything that you can do to help me get my channel out there. As I'm new here, and I thank you for watching.